Hi there, welcome to my home. It's um, Sunday, 12 noon over here, it's 12 noon Pacific in California. And um, I'm always happy to have you come to my home. I love it, I, I love greeting you, I love welcoming you here. And today I'm going to talk about whether self-love makes you self-indulgent. It's a topic that comes up that people write in from time to time. Also, while you're listening to this, if you have your own questions, particularly if they are questions relevant to what I'm talking about, please post them below. And also, I'd love to hear where you're from or just, just post something to say hi, because I just love to hear from you. So it's always wonderful just to see your comments. And of course, it's always wonderful to get your emojis. Thank you for all the emojis and the love. And look, I've got my emojis today too. So there you go. And this is compliments of James John of LAF. And I still have them, James, if you're tuned in. Um, so today, as I said, I want to speak about um, whether self-love leads to self-indulgence. A lot of people ask me that if they encourage their kids to love themselves or if they love themselves and if it means allowing themselves to be who they are, does that mean they can eat as much pizza as they want or drink as much wine as they want or do whatever they want? Now, technically, yes, it does mean that. But remember one thing, remember one thing, I say you have to love yourself. By the way, notice my t-shirt, love yourself like your life depends on it. And so, so here's the thing, when you love yourself, you are aware of how you feel about things. When you love yourself, you give yourself permission to do things that work for you. So for example, if you are into whatever, whether it's it's wine or chocolate or pizza or whatever it is. As soon as you start hitting the point of when it's too much, your body feels it and you start to feel, uh oh, this is not working. I better eat more vegetables or I better reach for that celery juice. You feel it because you love yourself, you care about yourself and you wanna live long. You know, you, you may allow yourself to to smoke or vape or something, but then immediately you'll kind of feel, uh oh, this is not for me, my body doesn't want it, because you love yourself. Self-indulgence, however, is completely different. Self-indulgence comes from lack of self-love. It's a lack of awareness of what your body needs or wants. There's like a lack of self-love, so there's a hole that you want to fill up, and you fill that up with indulging in whatever it is, you can name it, whether it's alcohol, whether it's meds, whether it's food, whether it's shopping, whatever it is, overindulging or indulgence is different from self-love or self-care. Very, very different. Um, because when you need something, when you are filling a hole, that is a lack of self-love. So here's how to identify the difference. Are you feeling empty and alone when you're not getting whatever it is? If you're feeling empty and alone, then that is an addiction. That is from lack of self-love. You are overeating and um, overdoing it from a lack of self-love. Now here's another tricky one. People can be passionate about stuff. They can be passionate about food or wine uh, or whatever, you know, because they, that's their passion. They're a foodie or they can be passionate about music or their work. Being passionate about something is very different from being, um, from filling a hole or from being overindulgent. Passion comes from love. Passion comes from feeding your soul. Passion increases your energy. Remember last week I talked about charging your batteries? If you haven't heard that one, please go back and listen to my video from last week. Also, if you think what I'm saying today will help anyone you know, please share it. So now when you follow something with passion, it actually charges your batteries. But when you are filling a hole from a place of addiction, then you are actually depleting your batteries. Because with an addiction, you feel fear. You're doing it from a place of fear. You feel fearful that if you don't do this, you're gonna feel lonely and lost. And so if, if that is how you're feeling, 
There are other things you can do to help you. And one of the things that you need to work on is in loving yourself more. It's in seeing your own self-worth. And you may need to, um, you may need to seek out professional help but I have got a lot of tips in my last book, What If This Is Heaven, which helps people with differentiating between, um, between self-love and, and, and so, and also, and this is the book. So I do speak a lot about this sort of thing in that book and how to, and how to love yourself more and also what it means to love yourself more. A lot of people are also afraid to love themselves because they think it's egotistical. Another question that comes up is that um, at what point does it become egotistical? Just like at what point does it become too self-indulgent? So here's the thing that concerns me. Many people who have this concern about being egotistical actually have what I call um, a negative ego or an inferiority complex. Uh, Christian Northrup talks about this also in very great detail. So it's what is called an inferiority complex or you have an inferior ego. You worry more about having an ego to the point where your ego is so small uh, that you that you you make yourself invisible so your work is not to worry about having a big ego your work is in bringing your ego up to normal so those who have an inferior ego an inferiority complex your work is actually to embrace your ego you don't have to worry about having too much ego now even for people that have too much ego, if you notice that you have a child that you might be suspecting of having too much ego, what I suggest is don't tell them to suppress their ego. Don't tell them the ego is bad and make your ego small. Instead, encourage them to increase their awareness. Encourage them to increase their awareness of the people around them and the world at large. If you are feeling that lately you have become too self-indulgent, too self-absorbed, and you're starting to get too addicted to things, the best way out is to increase your awareness, your self-awareness and your awareness of, of your place in the world and your awareness of the people around you and your awareness of the world in general and your environment. So it's not about suppressing your ego. It's not about stopping loving yourself. It's about increasing your awareness. So now if we have any questions, I'll be happy to go to the questions. Okay, we have several questions about loving yourself. So okay. I know these come up time and time again and people are wondering, what does it mean to love myself? And how can I love myself more? Okay, cool. So number one, I would say with loving yourself is giving yourself permission to do what works for you. That's huge, okay? So if I could put it in one sentence, it, loving yourself means doing what works for you, really. Uh, and so let me expand on this. Um, so for example, um, people may be telling you things like, oh, you need to, you need to focus on the news and what's happening on the news and you're not aware of what's happening in our world. Now, let's say if you start watching the news and it starts making you fearful and it makes you angry, that's obviously not working for you. Maybe you, are, you can be a more loving person by turning off the news. That's me, I'm describing me. I work better when I don't watch the news, when I focus on just sharing love. Because for me, when I watch the news, it depletes me, it drains my battery. When my battery is drained, I can't share love because love comes from having a supercharged battery. That's what love is. Love is charging your own battery. Love is doing what works for you. And of course people write to me and say, how can you say you don't watch the news and aren't you aware of what's happening outside in the other side of the world? But here's the thing, the minute I focus on that, it depletes my battery and it makes me less able to share love. So loving yourself means honoring what works for you. That's number one to me in loving yourself. Number two is in consciously increasing the things that charge your battery, whatever they may be. Become aware of what drains you and what charges you. Um, so if it drains you, 
to watch the news or if it drains you to be in crowds, if it drains you to spend a lot of time in hospitals visiting sick friends, take time out to charge your battery. Really take time out to charge your battery. Because when your battery is charged, here's what happens. When you love yourself enough to charge your battery, your energy becomes bigger because your battery is charged, just like your smartphone. You have more energy in you. When you have more energy in you, it becomes effortless to uplift other people. You do it simply by being present. You know how people align themselves to each other, like you can feel other people's energies and they can feel yours. If your energy is drained and you don't love yourself enough to charge your batteries and your energy is drained and you walk into a room because your energy is so low, you will be you will actually be borrowing everyone else's energy and you will be draining them. In the same way, if someone else's energy is drained, they will be borrowing yours. So your responsibility is to keep charging your own battery so your very presence can charge other people. But each of us needs to take responsibility to love ourselves and charge our own battery so we bring that charge, that love with us wherever we go. Uh Vija is watching from India, so she's up right awake right now just to see you. Um, Thank you. And she loves your quote, my di desire is to awaken the dormant guru within you. But she wants to know, how do I awaken that guru within me? So the, that's a great question. And you know what? That's kind of the chapter that I'm writing about this moment in my new book. So I am writing a um, third book, which is called Sensitive is the New Strong. And the subtitle of the book is Living as a Six Sensory Being. And so the dormant guru within you is learning to trust your own inner voice. It doesn't mean you don't trust and believe other spiritual teachers, but it does mean giving yourself permission to only work with or listen to the spiritual teachers that are uplifting you, the ones that are reminding you of who you are and the power within you. Remember, you have this power within you. Everything I talk about, everything I have access to, you have it within you. And every week that I sit here and talk to you, every book I write, everything I do, is to remind you that it's within you. Um, the reason why I talk about waking the dormant guru within you is because when you don't do that, when you give your power to the voices outside, you become vulnerable to falling prey to the false voices. You become vulnerable to falling prey to cult leaders. You become vulnerable to falling prey to people who need your energy more than you need theirs. And that's the thing. A true spiritual guru will awaken the guru within you so that you don't need them anymore. So that you know you have access to the same power they do. And every now and then, you will come across teachers who you need for that step of your journey. But remember, the connection, the truth is within you. It's about believing in yourself, not about believing in them. And that's what it means to waken the guru within you. So thank you for that beautiful question. Nuria has questions about self-forgiveness and she's asking, how do I work self-forgiveness without draining myself? So here's the thing, if it drains you, it means you're either you're not doing it quite the way that honors yourself or you're not ready to forgive yet. So, um, so I know you're asking about self-forgiveness, but here's something that a lot of people do, particularly if you are an empath, if you're a downtrodden empath, if you're like a doormat, a people pleaser, and you know that you're supposed to forgive and you know you're supposed to love other people unconditionally. A big mistake we make is when somebody treads on you, when somebody takes advantage of you, uses you, abuses you, you're in an abusive relationship, and you become more concerned with, how do I forgive them? How do I forgive me? And you become more concerned with that and with how do I love them unconditionally, even after what they've done, than you are about loving yourself unconditionally. So the number one thing is not about forgiving yourself. It's not about loving other people unconditionally. It's not about forgiving other people or yourself. 
It's about loving yourself unconditionally wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, wherever you are in your life. Somebody's treating you like a doormat. You're in an abusive relationship. You're too scared to get out. You don't know how to forgive yourself. You don't know how to forgive them. You don't know what to do. You don't know you're stuck. The first thing to do is to say, no matter what, I'm with me. I'm with myself. As if you're talking to your best friend, as if you're talking to your child who's going through this pain. What would you do if it was your own child that was going through what you're going through? Talk to yourself like that and say, I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. I'm going to see you through this and I'm going to love you through this no matter what happens. That's what loving yourself means. So don't worry about forgiving yourself. Love yourself first, wherever you are. Give yourself a big hug. And thank you for being so brave to ask that question. Tyne uh, says, I've heard you say that the purpose of life is to experience joy. Did I understand that correctly? And is it really that simple? Yes, it is that simple. <laughs> it is to experience joy. And along the way, of course, we experience heartache and pain and all these other things. But you know, all those things contribute to the joy as well. So, um, you know, I, uh, uh, if I knew, for example, if somebody told me before I came into this life, and I probably did know before I came into this life, but if somebody said, you know, you're going to come into this life as a, living in a country as an ethnic minority, so you're going to be discriminated against, you're going to be bullied, you're, um, you're going to get cancer, you're going to almost die, you're not going to have children, you're going to be in a culture where there's gender disparity and you're going to be born a woman where women are not as respected as men. I would listen to that and I would go, holy moly, who would want a life like that? But you know what? That is the life I've lived. And you know what else? I wouldn't trade it for anything because I have experienced the highest joys and I feel so blessed and so lucky to have had that experience and to have come into this world and to be where I am today and to be sitting here talking to all of you and having that level of experience and knowledge and, and feeling and you know really it is experiencing life and it gives me so much joy to know that I have experienced all that and I've come through and I've come through and I'm even stronger than before and more knowledgeable and more empathetic and more sensitive and more of so much that I have so much more to take with me when I one day cross over for good. So thank you for that beautiful question. Little side note, Susan says, that is the best shirt ever. Oh, yay. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> this is my cue to stand up and show it to you. I'm so happy you love it. So this t-shirt says, love yourself like your life depends on it. And so my beautiful um, social media manager helped me to design some merchandise with my quotes on it. So we're going to put a link um, on this under this video mm -hmm. so you can check it out. And oh, show them, show them your socks. Oh, really? Your and so I have <laughs> these. Um, here, here, I'll go down. Okay. So I love. So I have so a collection. Pretty. So I get these from Amazon, but I have a whole collection. They're actually water shoes with great soles. And, so um, you know, and I have another one, which is like all rainbow colors. And um, Danny rudely calls it unicorn vomit color. <laughs> but I love them. So it's like I have three or four in different colors. I just love them. They're so comfy. Um, but love yourself like your life depends on it, because really, it does. It does. You know, um, you really have to do what works for you. That is what self-love is. It's about listening to your inner voice, not all the voices from the outside, because the voices from the outside contradict each other. Voices from the outside can have their own agendas. You need to listen to your inner voice. And the thing is with empaths, that's harder sometimes. So being an empath is a double-edged sword. Your inner voice is actually louder when you're an empath, but your outer um, empathy towards other people and what other people want from you is also louder. So this is the juggle. This is the, the world and the life of, of an empath. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Muna says, what is your spiritual routine to nurture your self-love? How do you stay grounded in yourself or your higher soul? That is a great question. So it varies. My 
uh, self-love or spiritual routine is about not sticking to a routine because I'm someone that's not good at routines so um, so here's the thing years ago before I had the near-death experience I used to judge myself for not being able to stick to a routine people used to tell me all the time you need to have a spiritual routine or you need in order to be a spiritual person you need to have a routine and the routine is like you have to get up you have to meditate or you have you need to pray or and unless you develop a routine you don't have spiritual strength I found that I was always judging myself for not being spiritual enough and I felt oh I can't meditate I can't sit still for so long oh I'm just not spiritual enough I was always judging myself and I was trying to be more spiritual it was only when I died that I realized that we are spiritual we are spiritual whether we realize it or not so there are a lot of things I do to support myself to to nurture myself to love myself but the one thing is that I'm always aware of where I'm at energy wise. Am I feeling tired? Am I feeling drained? I'm very aware of that. And so I, I tend to take care of that. So I will make sure I get enough sleep. That's one thing. Another thing I do is I, I tend to take um, homeopathy to support me because I am someone that really believes in energy medicine more than I'm more into I know that illness starts on an energetic level and not on the physical level it's you only see it in the physical after you've been dealing with it on an emotional energetic metaphysical level for a while then it starts to manifest on the physical level so even though I do things on the physical level to support my body I actually also do things on the energetic level and I truly believe in homeopathy. If anyone would like a recommendation for a great home, homeopath, I would be very happy to recommend her. She's amazing. But um, yeah, so, so I, I really believe in energy healing and I do meditate, but I meditate my own way. I don't follow what it says in the books. I do it with, with music that, that really alters my state. Sometimes I do it out in nature. Sometimes I'll sit on the beach, but it isn't a fixed time every single day. Um, I also do fun things like I like burning incense or saging my house just to clear the energy. And, you know, and I'm not someone that likes to judge people as having bad energy, good energy, toxic energy. But because I'm sensitive to other people and other people's emotions, it can get confused with my own emotions. They don't have bad energy. I don't, I don't see that. But what it is, is you want to tap into your own energy without confusing other people. So I do things like um, I spend time alone. I love spending time at home. I love turning on my music, turning on my aromatherapy oils. So that's the long-winded way of saying that's how I spiritually take care of myself and nurture myself. Would you like a couple more? Two yes. more questions? Okay. Yes. Nestor is saying he was listening to a Wayne Dyer video yesterday and he loves him. Would you like to say anything about Wayne? <laughs> oh, Wayne. I love Wayne Dyer. If it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. He. He really, he brought me out onto the world stage and I still feel him around me all the time. I really do. I mean, I had some obstacles like maybe six, eight months ago, I was going through a, a difficult patch and what ended up happening was better than anything I could have ever hoped for. And I really feel that Wayne's guidance, it was Wayne's hand in there. And it was like he suddenly took me to a new level that, you know, because I was kind of feeling, oh, if Wayne was here, I wouldn't be going through this. And I was going through a bit of a slump emotionally and everything, things happening in the world. And I thought if Wayne was here, I wouldn't be going through the slump. And then I waited, a few weeks later, doors opened that would never have opened had I not been going through that slump. So, and I always feel Wayne's hand has something to do with that because I was thinking of him and thinking, this wouldn't be happening if, if Wayne was here. And boom, a door opened. So our deceased loved ones are always around us. They're always listening to us. So even when you feel like they've forsaken you, sometimes you need to go through that so that another door can open. 
William says, when you know colds and flu are sending a message, but you don't know how to rectify the energy, what do you do? Uh, my husband's going through a flu right now. <laughs> and uh, so, so we've banished him. So no. that... <laughs> I was just kidding. I was kidding. So that's why you don't hear his voice today. And, and the wonderful Milena has, has come over. So um, so he's going through a flu, but I think he, he just ran himself out. So when you have a flu, sometimes it's as simple as your body just saying, stop, I need to rest. It can be as simple as that. So the other thing I want to mention is that whatever you're going through, if it's as simple as a sore throat, a cold, a flu, things like that, Often they can have a meaning, like a sore throat can mean you're not expressing yourself, you're not speaking your truth. But sometimes something like a flu, a cold, can just be your body's way of saying that you're working too hard, you're trying too hard, stop trying, stop working. And that is something that empaths, doormats, people pleasers, downtrodden empaths have a tendency to do. We have a tendency to try too hard. We try too hard to win over people. Don't do that. That's another act of self-love. The act of self-love is in knowing that you're okay inside and in giving yourself permission to rest, to relax, and to trust who you are. You know, and something I'm sure many of you will relate to if you're on social media, um, you might have 99 positive comments and there's one who's a bit disgruntled, your focus will be on that one. And how many of you relate to that? Tell me in the comments. The focus is on that one and to try and convince that one. That's how I used to be. But I realized all that does is that it drains my energy and so that I'm not able to be fully present for the 99 who I've helped. So what I do is I keep focusing on the 99 who I'm helping and what happens is that one, either, either they'll get on board eventually and they'll kind of see it because I'm focusing on the 99 and I'm still doing what it takes to inspire the 99, or they'll realize that my message doesn't resonate with them and they'll move on to someone else who does resonate with them, whichever way is actually fine. But when I spend my time focusing on that one, all it does is that it depletes my energy so that I'm no longer being an inspiration for the 99. So remember, focus on what works. That's what self-love is. That's what self-love is. Thank you all. Shall we do one more? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, actually something came up, so I want to mention it. Um, someone is saying they would love the recommendation for your holistic doctor. If you have the information to say it right now, that's great. Or we can post it in the comments. How would you like to do it? Do you so she, I can post it in the comments. Her name is Anna and she is actually based in Croatia, but she does consultations online. So I am happy to give her a shout out and post it into the, I'll post her website in the comments. She is absolutely fantastic. And she has been following my work. And, uh, and so I just, I just love her because she is very much in line with everything I talk about, which is what's so important to me. I don't have to go against what I believe in. And you know, when you're dealing with things that come up in the body, I know I tell you, be your own guru and, and all this, and you have the power within you. But sometimes you need an external source, someone who you trust, someone who you know thinks like you, but someone who you know has an expertise in an area that you don't have the expertise in. I don't have the expertise in which homeopathic meds to take for what condition. So I go to her for that. So, so there you have it. You do need people outside of you. Thank you so much. If you feel anything I've said here helps people, please, please share this video. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it. And I look forward to seeing you all next week, n next Sunday, if not sooner. And please just uh, stay happy, stay happy, love yourself, love yourself like your life depends on it, because it does, and do whatever works. Love you all, bye.